What's up guys, I'm Funny here. Now, it's been quite a while since I did a positive top 10 video. The last time I did it was my top 10 fake Aver uh, videos by Ben Phillips. And since uh, my last top 10, which is my top 10 least favorite Pokemon, didn't get that much love, I thought I'd do a bit uh, more of a positive top 10 video. I'm going to be going over my top 10 and trainers who I think are the strongest in the Pokemon games. And then and later on, on, I'm going to be doing my top 10 and strongest trainers from the anime. So, I hope you keep an eye out for it. To figure out who, who was the strongest trainer, I had to, uh, like, uh, well, first I need to find out what Pokemon they had, then their moves, items, maybe you know, like they were EV trained, and just my own personal experience. So, if you, if you think I missed out a trainer, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. At number 10, we have... Alder from Black and White. Now when you battle Alder, he can be one of two things. One, he can be an overwhelming force that could tear you to shreds with very little effort, or he can be a major pushover that you can only you can easily defeat with only two or three Pokemon. In my own opinion, the only thing that makes Alder a challenge is that he his uh, like, team is extremely over-leveled. Other than that, he's not really that much of a challenge. Like, half of his team are bug types, one's a normal type, one's a dragon type, and one is an ice type. There's a lot of weaknesses in his team, so if you have the right Pokemon, you could easily defeat him with very little effort. Literally, the, all of his main aim like threats are definitely his Bufalant and his Volcarona. Bufalon because it's got a really, really high attack stat, very powerful attacks, and it can be a menacing force unless you have a fighting type move. His Volcarona's no slouch either. Literally, if it gets one Quiv Dance up and then goes in with Bug Buzz or uh, like Fire Blast or whatever fire type move it has, it can annihilate you with literally no effort whatsoever. And if it feels like it, he can even throw off a Hyper Beam to kill your team. Whoopsie! But other than that, literally all of his team are a breeze. Like Excelgore, Escavalier, Vanillax, and Drudigan. All you need is a, uh, like one flamethrower, and then for Drudigan, all you need is either an ice move or a dragon move. And then you've pretty much demolished his entire team. But still, Alder can be quite the challenge um, if you are underprepared. So that's why it's at number 10. At number 9, we have Steven the Champion of Hoenn. No matter which game you battle Steven in, either the originals or the e remakes, he can be a major threat. Steven can be a major threat. His two most powerful teams, in my opinion, is his Emerald team and his Auras uh, rematch team. Like, they are both very powerful in their own ways. To be honest with you, I don't know which of his team is more powerful. I mean, you could argue that as his Auras rematch team is more powerful because he's got a Mega Metagross, but you could defeat his team with very little effort. So I defeat these in his Auras rematch team so many times with so little effort, it's unbelievable. As for all his um, Emerald team, I've only defeated it a handful of times because that team is really powerful. Maybe his most powerful team is his Emerald team, but I defeated his team when my Pokemon were like 20 levels under his. Like, it's hard to say which his uh, team is more powerful, but still, either team will give you a major, major challenge. Like, expect to lose at least one Pokemon when you face him, because he is definitely no slouch. At number 8, we have Wally. Now, in the original games, Wally was literally a pushover. Now, he literally, all you need to do is blow on him like you're blowing out a birthday candle, and he will go down like a domino. But then, over a decade later, we get remakes of the games. We hoping that Wally go goes through like amazing growth. Like we hope that he is a challenge. We get to the league, and he's still a pushover. 
And then, after we'd beaten the 50 streak at, on the Battle Maison... Side note, can you please help me to think of a strategy to beat them? I suck. We get asked by Wallet to have a rematch with him, and his team has gotten quite a bit more powerful. Like, his team like is level 64 to 66, I believe, and it will give you a run for your money, but you get a, ch a chance to actually have rematch with him at the Battle Maison. And that team is just too OP. Literally everything about this team is perfect. It's got uh, the perfect move set, the perfect item. I'm sure uh, it's got uh, uh, like some perfect IVs and our EV trained. And its levels are between level 77 to level 81. Like if you if don't, if you are under leveled, you are definitely screwed. But like, I have never faced this team. But I really, really want to. But in order to do that, I first need to get past the 50 streak on the Battle Maison. Please help me find a way to beat them, because I cannot find a way to beat them. At number seven, we have Blue. No matter where you battle Blue, he will be a real pain in the ass to defeat. Like, no matter, this is actually, he's a pain in the ass no matter where you battle him in. Like, in the original games, in the remakes. Like, there's just so many games where he is available to battle in. And he is a major, major challenge. I'm going to be going over the team which has given me the most trouble. And that is the champion team in Pokemon Yellow. Oh, that team is so damn difficult. Like, if you have never faced this team, I'm so glad that you haven't, because you will be pulling your goddamn hair out when you battle Blue. I'm going to be basing off his team when he is the Eevee evolves into Jolteon, because for some reason that's literally a uh, when, that's literally the majority of his teams. We've got a Sand Slash with very high attack power, speed, and two deadly moves that will end you, being Earthquake and Slash. We have a Cloister, which is basically there just to annoy you to death. We have a Nine Tails and an Executor, which really isn't the biggest worry in the world. We have an Alakazam, which basically has no weaknesses and can easily kill you with Psy Beam and Psychic. And finally, we have Jolteon, which can literally end you with both Thunder and Thunderbolt. Like, this team is just so overpowered. Like, not one Pokemon can annihilate this team. It's just so insane. Like, I have challenged like, this team so many times. Like, when I first played Pokemon Yellow, I, I... This is actually not a lie. I challenged him over 50 times. And it... It took me 50 tries just to defeat him. And it was just so goddamn annoying. So that's why Blue had to be here. At number 6, we have N. Now the reason I put N above Blue is because he actually managed to capture a legendary Pokemon, which Blue hasn't been able to do. He did try to add a cap capture Mewtwo in the Pokemon Origins, but failed, broke his Pokedex, and Blastoise basically got sent flying on top of him and broke every bone in his body. Literally, no matter which po uh, legendary Pokemon you go against on any scene, uh, literally, it can rip you to shreds if you are not careful. The others are meh, but they're not exactly overwhelming. He has a Caracosta, whose uh, ability it has Sturdy, and his only major threat is Grass Attacks. A Zoroark, who can become any member of the team, and has very powerful attacks in its disposal. An Archeops, who, who's really uh, not that uh, great. Like, it can be amazing, just as long as its HP doesn't hit in the yellow zone. And the last two members of the team, Kling Clang and Vanillux, aren't really much of a threat. Like, Kling Clang can and be you know, a little bit of a threat with Thunderbolt and Hyper Beam, but other than that, it's not really that much of a challenge. Still, literally all N needs is that legendary Pokemon alone. 
Either Zekrom or Reshiram can easily defeat Blue with no sweat whatsoever. At number five, we have Wallace. Oh, Wallace, you are a trainer I love to hate. Like, if you don't know what I'm on about, play Pokemon Emerald, get to the champion and battle, and you'll see what I mean. Wallace's team may not look it, but his team is way too powerful. It may not look it, but it is. It has lots of uh, like support moves, uh, secondary types can cover its weaknesses. There's so much about this team that makes you want to cry. Let's have a rundown of his team. We have a Gyarados who, whose moves are Surf, Earthquake, Dragon Dance, and Hyper Beam. Back then, Hyper Beam was a physical move, so Dragon Dance will boost the power of it. It's just so absurd. We have a Ludicolo who's basically here to be a Noia with Double Team, Giga Drain, Leech Seed, and Surf. Like, all of those are, is just to be a troll. Next up, we have a Tentacruel with Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Sludge Bomb, and Toxic, which is there to basically, well, just end you. Like, with its Toxic and Sludge Bomb, you are guaranteed to get poisoned. And that's just not fun. Next up, we have a Waylord, who's really the least of your worries with Water Spell, Rain Dance, Blizzard, and Double Edge. Like, literally, that is the least of your worries. Like, when you hear it's ace, you're going to be crapping yourself. Next up is a Wish Cash with Surf, Earthquake, Hyper Beam, and Amnesia. Like, Amnesia is a move that boosts the power uh, of um, f special defense, I think it is. I forgot, but still, it's just there to, to be a bulk and end you with very little effort. And finally, we have a Milo Tick, who has Surf, Toxic, Ice Beam, and Recover. Surf is for Stab, Ice Beam is for coverage against Grass types, Recover is so, oh, you can, it can heal itself without using potions, and Toxic is to make sure that your Pokemon die. Because it will badly poison your Pokemon, and if it's badly poisoned, the more it stays in the battle, the more damage it will take from the poison. So as you can see, Wallace is a huge problem in Pokemon Emerald. But in Ruby Sapphire and the uh, remakes, he's a pushover. At number four, we have Giovanni. If you have never played Pokemon Yellow, I highly recommend you should, because these are definitely some of the hardest Pokemon battles you will ever come across, Giovanni being one of them. He is the uh, final gym leader that we face, and he is a major pain to defeat. Like, I... It's just so hard to defeat him without losing any of your Pokemon. Just run down his team. We have a Doug Trio who has Sand Attack, Dig, Fisher, and Earthquake. That's literally the least of your worries. Like Sand Attack, Fisher, and Earthquake can be a major pain. Like still, if you have a fast water type or a fast grass type, it will die. Next up, we have a Persian who literally will just end you with a, a Screech Attack and a powerful Slash or Fury Swipes Attack. Next up, we have a Nido Queen with Tail Whip, Double Kick, Poison Sting, and Thunder. Like, this is a very deadly set, especially Thunder, because it will just end any water type you, you use. Next up, we actually have his two aces, who are at the exactly same level, but I, th I think and like, both of them are equally powerful. We have a Nido King with Thunder, Earthquake, Leer, and Thrash. Leah, so that our uh, way a um well earthquake and thrash can and do even more damage and thunder for coverage against well any water type on the field. And finally we have his Rhydon with Rock Slide, Fury Attack, Earthquake, and Horn Drill. Like this thing is so deadly. It's going to be hard to defeat this thing. Like, to be honest with you, Giovanni himself is gonna be hard to defeat because he is just so powerful. If you want a challenge, play Pokemon Yellow, get to Giovanni, 
and let me know how tough it was because it is a major challenge. At number three, we have red. If you didn't see this coming, do you have the right to call yourself a Pokemon trainer? Red is just so powerful. Like, he was the first Pokemon trainer. Like, he is just, just he's just powerful. Like, you got to admit, like, he's just insanely powerful. Like, even if you battle him in Gold, Silver, Crystal, or in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, he is a major threat. I'm going to be reading Aang off his Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver team. We've got a Pikachu holding a Light Ball with Thunderbolt, Volt Tackle, Quick Attack, and Iron Tail, which is basically the same move set as Ash. It is Sinnoh over Pikachu, but oh well. Next up, we have a Lapras with Blizzard and Brine for the Orb Stab and Psychic and Body Slam for coverage. And since it will be hailing, Blizzard will always hit. Next up is a Snorlax with the moves Giga Impact, Crunch, Shadow Ball, and Blizzard. Like, it's just there just to sweep your teams before you can even make a move. And it could also eat your attacks for lunch thanks to Thick Fat. Next up, we have a Venusaur with the moves Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Sleep Powder, and Frenzy Plant. It's just there to be an annoyer as well as an overwhelming threat. Next up is an all-out attacking Charizard with the moves Flare Blitz, Air Slash, Blast, Burn, and Dragon Pulse. Like, that moveset is so deadly, so be careful. Unless you have a Rock type, then you're fine. And finally, we have a Blast Toys with the moves Focus, Blast, Hydro Cannon, Blizzard, and Flash Cannon. Like, that moveset is so diverse, it's just so powerful. You do not know how powerful this thing is. And if that wasn't enough, his team are, are between level 80 to 88. Like, that is just so, so deadly. You have to be prepared for this team, because he will annihilate you like that. So that's why Red definitely had to be here. At number two, we have Gold. I know you don't battle gold at any point in the Pokemon main series games, but Sin and um, oh, Mr. Cumbria on put gold Owls on his is like top ten best uh, Pokemon trainer. I thought I might as well include him. Now Gold definitely has some of the best achievements in in the games. Like he is defeated all eight gym leaders in Johto, defeated uh, the new team Rocket, taken down the Elite Four and the champion. And then got an, and got the other eight badges, defeated and defeated Red. Like that is just so amazing. Like yes, he hasn't completed the Pokedex as I don't think so, but still, he is such an amazing trainer. Not only that, like literally, but defeating Red takes a lot of effort. Like he is definitely no slouch. Gold is just so so cool. Like, I can't give so much information about Gold since, one, we've never battled him in a main series game, and two, he's technically every a single player in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. So I'm going to have to leave it there, but still, Gold is just so powerful. However, there's still one other trainer, in my own opinion, that can take everybody down with very little effort. And finally, at number one, we have Cynthia. I'm sure everybody was expecting this. Cynthia is just so dang powerful. Like, no matter where you challenge her, she will give you a fight for your life. Let me just run and down Cynthia's team in a nutshell from Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. Spiritomb, with a very, a very bulky Pokemon with a wide variety of moves and no weaknesses. A Rose Raid, which has very powerful stab attacks and just as powerful all, um, uh, coverage attacks, so that way it can take care of all of its weaknesses. A Bulky Gastrodon, which can pretty much eat all of your attacks for lunch and then dish them out at the same time. A Lucario, which is basically an all-out attacking speed demon. A Milotic, with a powerful stab and coverage move 
and can use a move that can reflect all special attacks with double the damage, and use Aqua Ring, which can pretty much heal it every turn, so that way she can save potions. And to top it all off, the the Pokemon that pretty much ends every challenger, her Garchomp, which is basically the spawn of Satan, to be quite honest. Like, this thing can kill you with very little effort. In Pokemon Diamond it, and Pearl, it's got Dragon Rush, Earthquake, Brick Break, and Giga Impact. Like, that is just so, so deadly. No, literally, all of her, her team is just so deadly. Like, every po Pokemon there can and pretty much counter it, every Pokemon's weaknesses. Like, speaking of which, it basically has no weaknesses. Literally, her team has very little weaknesses. Her spirit team having none, and her Garchomp only having two. Like, this is just so insane. And this is why Cynthia definitely deserved her spot at number one. And there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. And be sure to tell me if you think I missed out a trainer, or, or if I misplaced one. Also, just to let you know, I am going um, on Thursday, this Thursday, I am going to be doing my 100 subscriber uh, a challenge since, well, I've kind of put it off since I've, uh, I'm a very, very busy person. So I'm going to be doing it Thursday. However, unfortunately, they did take the deadly wing challenge off of the menu, which I found a real pain. So I'm going to be doing the next best thing, which is the deputy dog challenge, which is a two feet hot dog with a pound of fries and a milkshake. So I hope you are looking forward to that challenge. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, be sure to give it a massive thumbs up, comment down below, share this video with your friends, and if you're new, subscribe to my channel, it's been Inferno Today. Also, don't forget to check out my second channel, Dr. Infernape, where I team up with my very good friend, Dr. Amnesia, and we do all things anime. So if you're an anime lover, be sure to check it out. Okay, that's all from me, so until the next time, this is Infernape, signing off. Bye!